thank you for your kind introduction. Um, okay. So the slide is coming up. Um, so my name is Hugh Kim. Um, the paper I will present today is a joint work with Olivia and Raymond. Um, so we are lucky to have all authors here. So, uh, so you know, we can uh, have lots of uh, uh, good points. So the paper is titled, about, titled as the when and how to uh, delegate uh, life cycle analysis of financial advice. So economists are making lots of assumptions. You know, sometimes the assumptions are realistic, and sometimes may not be real, well grounded on the reality. And in standard finance theory, um, people are assuming that investors are always changing their behavior. They are always changing their asset allocations when there is a change in uh, financial markets. So for example, when there's a good shock to stock market, uh, financial economists are assuming that investors will allocate more, more wealth to the stock market so that um, the stock price will go up. But this assumption may not be realistic. So there was a survey asking people whether you spent more than two hours in uh, various activities. And uh, about 15% of the people said that um, uh, they uh, spend two hours, more than two hours, in managing their retirement accounts. But 25% of people said that they uh, spend two hours to look for the best restaurant for special events. Or 21% said that they spent more than two hours to find the best flat TV. But, but I guess, obviously, the uh, managing the retirement accounts, you know, uh, well, is much more important than uh, finding the best TV or best, you know, uh, you know, best TV or best restaurants. So this is the reality. People do not pay attention or uh, they are not really doing a very active work in managing their uh, financial asset. And many of them said that um, they, are not doing very, they are not doing very good work. 60% uh, of, of, of them are saying they need some improvement. Their asset management needs some, some improvement. And uh, the main reason they are not doing their best work is uh, I mean, the main reason they are not actively managing their financial, uh, financial management is that they don't have enough time, or they don't have interest, or they uh, don't have the, uh, the knowledge to manage their assets. So this, if I ask the similar question to you, I guess many of you did not really touch your portfolio in the last month. Um, and this inactive investor uh, uh, was, ha has been already studied in uh, academics. And one of the uh, only few papers uh, is the, uh, by uh, Agnew and her co-authors, uh, published in American Economic Review in 2003. They studied a large retirement plan and found that most of the asset allocation is very extreme, 0% in equity or 100% in, in, in equity. And almost all of them did not touch their portfolio for a long time, for a long time. And not only in retirement account setting, this inertia or doing nothing uh, uh, portfolio management has been observed in general uh, account setting too. So um, the Bruno Meyer and Nagel um, studied pen, um, panel study of income dynamics, uh, which is representing representing a, a large sample of American people. And they wanted to test traditional asset pricing model, um, but what they found was people do not touch their portfolio for a long time. So this is what people are doing in reality when it comes to financial management. And also, uh, as the uh, retirement plans are switching from uh, defined benefit to defined contribution, so many people are forced to manage their asset by themselves. But as we saw, they are not doing, um, uh, they are not really touching their portfolio. So we are having a large group of unengaged majority. Um, so, so, so uh, the very uh, natural question would be, uh, what, what should they do? Doing nothing, I will talk about why they do not touch. But doing nothing may be something optimal choice or not. Or in the language of uh, Brett in the morning session, it can be disease or it can be just their rational choice. But doing nothing may not be optimal choice for uh, you know, building up good amount of money for their retirements. So the question we are asking in, in this paper is very simple. What can you do? What would be a good policy option to, uh, to increase the, uh, the wealth uh, for the people's retirements? And we are specifically, we are asking 
when would be an optimal time to hire a financial advisor? When would be a, a good time uh, for them to have an access to uh, professional advice? It can be young, middle, or old. And uh, what type of financial advice uh, would be helpful? So actually, we already have a very low cost delegation option uh, or default option uh, called as the target date fund. But is it good enough? Or uh, do we have some, uh, some rooms to improve? And that is what we will uh, answer uh, in this research. To answer this kind of policy, policy question, we need to come up with a good answer why they don't touch their portfolio. It can be an irrational choice. They are maybe they are just that dumb, um, or they, are, they don't know what they are doing. But it can be also their rational choice. It may not be a disease. This, this, that they are doing their best work, um, um, given uh, uh, they are, um, you know, this is making uh, environments. So, so actually, this why question was already answered um, in uh, one of our paper, which is now first coming uh, in uh, the uh, uh, Journal of Financial, Eco Financial Economics. So, uh, a very uh, quick overview of the result is that people will, I mean, when it comes to the, uh, the when would be optimal time to have the financial advice, all the are is the better. <coughs> so so at the, if uh, people have an access to a financial advice at the start of their age, I, I, mean, I mean, at the start of their working age, they will enjoy 50% more uh, wealth, I mean, 50% uh, the uh, more welfare than having a delegation option to uh, um, the uh, 10 years later. So all the are is the better. And when it comes to uh, the comparison between the simple rule-based delegation option and um, the uh, customized financial advice, the simple rule-based uh, delegation option should be provided at zero cost to be the customized financial advice. It is better to have something. It is better, better than nothing, but still, it may not be the optimal. The, uh, the, it may not be the, uh, the, uh, the, the only thing uh, which can improve the investor's welfare. So this is the quick result overview. Um, so maybe I need to uh, quickly uh, go through why people do not touch their portfolio. So in our model, we are considering a time budget constraint. So in each period in time, people are endowed some unit of time. So you know, time is something we ignored in, in the financial literature. And, but time is really something we are always endowed. We don't earn it. We don't lend it out. We don't borrow it. We don't deposit it. We are always in the time, and we are locating this time to various various activities, and we are locating it to uh, uh, walking or enjoying leisure or some other activities. But to simplify our our, our discussion, uh, we are only considering uh, mainly two uh, activities. Um, so, so they are always given a unit of time, and they can decide how much to work, and they can decide how much to enjoy leisure. And now, uh, when they want to manage their financial asset actively, and they need to also sac sacrifice some fraction of their time to manage their asset, because financial management is not easy. Um, if they want to invest some of their money in stock market, they need to know, you know the, how the stock market in the future will evolve. It is not easy. It takes time or cognitive ability to process all those informations. And we are modeling, I mean, we are modeling, I mean, this time budget constraint with these three activities. So if investor wanna, if an uh, investor wanna actively manage his asset, he needs to sacrifice some fraction of his time. And we will, we'll eventually show that this fraction of time can be only a two or 4%. So this, this fraction of time can be considered as the inefficiency of financial decision making. Um, and as uh, you know, Keith in the early morning session uh, already showed that, um, uh, I mean, this uh, inefficient, inefficiency of decision making uh, in financial management is U-shaped. So young people, they are cognitively able, but they, have, they do not have enough experience. And middle-aged, they are still cognitively able, and they accumulated quite a good amount of experience. But old, they are cognitively uh, not at the best status, but they already, uh, they already have lots of experience. So overall, the, uh, the, the efficiency, inefficiency pattern of financial decision making is U-shaped. Um, and if this time cost is just a one-time, one-shot cost, 
maybe sacrificing or two or four percent of their time for financial management may not be very costly. But the real cost of finan active financial management is coming from the future. So in their work, in, their, in, the, in our work, you know, in, in our, uh, you know, um, <coughs> in our career, we are paid by the expertise we have in, in that um, area. Um, but this expertise or human capital or job specific skill is accumulated in a learning by doing, uh, learning by doing uh, fashion. So the more work we do, and we earn more money today, but you also accumulate more job specific skill. So if the investor, if, a, if an investor, if an investor uh, actively managing his um, asset, he needs to sacrifice some fraction of their time today. And at the, at the same time, he needs to sacrifice opportunity to accumulate his own job specific skill. So sometimes people would find it optimal not to touch their portfolio because it will decrease um, their current labor income, but also at the same time, they will, it will also decrease their uh, future job specific skill. So for example, maybe, maybe newly hired intern should work 100% of his time for working, otherwise he will not be hired, or newly hired you know, assistant professor should work more on producing a better uh, high quality research than managing uh, his small amount of money. Um, so, <laughs> so sometimes active management it may not be op optimal choice. Doing nothing, inertia may be optimal choice. So with this intuition in our mind, we are formulating um, the, uh, household decision making in a life cycle setting. And households are deciding uh, how much to consume, how much to uh, work, how much, to, how much time to enjoy leisure, and, uh, and then uh, whether to actively manage or just to do nothing. So by actively managing the financial asset, he will come up with the state of the art as a mix between equity and bond, but he needs to sacrifice the time. And then this will decrease the future uh, uh, labor income uh, in the form of decreased expertise in the workplace. And a model is well matched with the data. So this solid line is representing a uh, diffraction of people not touching their portfolio based on the model. And a dotted dot, the dot is representing the fraction of people not touching their portfolio in the data. Uh, the data is a panel study of income dynamics. So we had only two or 4% of the decision-making cost for financial management. We could generate this inertia um, in the model. There's no dumbness or there's no irrationalities here. Everything is rational choice. With this optimal choice, we could think, with this uh, model, we could think about uh, delegation option. So if the delegation option is zero cost, always it is good. Um, but um, so we can, we can introduce a, a, a delegation option with some cost. So we need to come up with a realistic magnitude of delegation option. Um, and we are uh, the tabulated the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the delegation fees from US SNC data, and then most of them are charging a percentage of fee out of total asset under management, and an average is about 1.4%. And then they're also charging some minimum uh, fixed fee, and we are considering about $2,000 as a fixed minimum fee. And we are considering two policy options. The first one is when is the best, best timing to have a delegation option, and then, and then what would be uh, uh, the uh, beneficial uh, way of delegate, uh, delegating the uh, financial advice. And these uh, two tables are summarizing the results. Um, the first table is showing that if the, the uh, investor has a delegation option at the start of the uh, working life, they will enjoy about 1.1% welfare increase. But if he has the delegation option after 10 years of his working life, we'll only enjoy about 0.5% wealthy increase, huge uh, reduction of welfare. And also we are doing a less of the uh, rule-based delegation option. And 60% or 60% fixed equity allocation or 100 minus age equity allocation or 80 minus, uh, 80 minus age uh, uh, the uh, allocation to equity. If the delega delegation option is uh, produced at the market rate, the, uh, the welfare increase only half of the customized uh, the delegation. 
only when it is provided at zero cost, it will be equal to, it will, it will be similar to a customized delegation. So conclusion, earlier the better, and customized advice would be better. The current target date fund should be provided at zero cost to be the, the uh, customized financial advice.